God's number one priority for you is not your comfort zone. So if it was about comfort zone, we would only ever be planted like, okay, let's find where it's summer, let's find where it's summer, let's find where it's summer, let's find where it's summer. But the truth is, when there's a winter season, we are gonna talk about this in, in an upcoming Light in the Darkness, the winter forces a root system to grow. It forces a plant to drive down into the ground for its source, for its resource. And here's the thing, people change church too often because they go, this is no longer suiting my comfort zone. And the truth is, Christianity is not about a comfort zone, it's about building character. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Light in the Darkness. Yes. We're back Woo. together. <laughs> I was saying now to the production team, this show should actually be called Beauty and the Beast. Because uh, when I'm on uh. my own, I, yeah, I think my wife just Whoa. makes makes it uh, <laughs> makes it that much easier to watch. But anyways, we love you, babe. It's good to have you back. So over the last few episodes, uh, we've been talking about our values, um, our behaviors, our beliefs at Redemption Church, which has actually come from um, the night we usually have when church was open, where we invite people who are interested in becoming a part of Redemption Church, making this their home church, to come and hear a little bit about our story, uh, we want to hear a little bit about their story. We want to talk about the church's story. So actually, we've been talking a little bit about our values and our behaviors the last few episodes. And uh, babe, is there something you wanted to highlight about something today regarding that? No, yeah, I think we ha we have a scripture that we always share on those um, Discover Redemption nights. Um, and it's Psalm 92 verse 13. And it says, those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. And it's, it's actually so important. And we always say on those Discover Redemption nights that it is so important to be planted in the house of our Lord. Yeah. And it is linked to our purpose. It's linked to destiny and mm -hmm. the plans that God has for us. And we always say it doesn't matter if it's not Redemption Church. And you might be watching. Maybe you're not in a church. Maybe you're in a different church. But it is so important to be planted in a church, the church God has called you yeah. to. And I was reminded of a story in my life um, when I was younger, obviously I grew up in Rhema, but my parents immigrated back to Ireland and um, we were there in church and I was missing Rhema so much. I was like mm. so homesick. And we heard of a well-known preacher coming into Belfast, Northern Ireland from America. We're like, yay, let's go hear him. Let's hear what he has to say. But in my heart, I was like, Lord, you need to just settle my heart. If we need to be here in Ireland, settle it in my heart. Wherever we need to be, confirm it. That was like my little prayer that no one knew about. So anyway, we're sitting in the service in Northern Ireland and this preacher's preaching on a word about being planted. Da, da, da. And in the middle, he literally stops and says, if your church is in Johannesburg, you get back there. You need to be where God is planted and called you to be. Thank the Lord. And I was I just like, have, that is my cue. Had you as my wife. <laughs> I'm going back to South Africa. I'm meant to be there. And, and that's where I'm meant to be planted. And I literally, yeah, I think it was about a year later, I moved back to South Africa, came to Bible school. Mm. But it actually made no sense because I left my entire family at a very young age, moved across the world to get back yeah. to my church. And, um, and I honestly believe... It's also linked to even why we're even sitting here, why we're even married. Um, but I think your destiny and the plans God has for you is always linked to a church. It has to be. And to a church that you're called to be planted in. It is, yeah. it's the word of God. It's what his plan is for our lives, right? Yeah, totally. And I think I just want to talk about some myths and truths. Okay, first and foremost, being planted is not about being a pot plant. Uh, we have pot plants in here right now. I should actually yeah. grab one and check it on here. But uh, somebody grab one. Yeah, grab one for me, babe. Uh, there she goes, offset behind the scenes. That's okay. Let her run. It's all good. Uh, okay, well, thanks, do. babe. Here we go. That's fantastic. There we okay. go. So here's the deal. This is a pot plant. This is not a planted plant. So although it has, uh, <laughs> it's not real. But anyways, <laughs> although theoretically. <laughs> This has its roots in soil. 
This is the furthest they can grow and this is the biggest they can get because it's not actually planted. Why? Because as a pot plant, it is mobile. Yeah. And I feel like Christians think this is Christianity and this is doing life with God. And the challenge is that's not. Whenever you have this mindset in everything God calls you to, there's an element of a commitment and the truth is, it's not about a comfort zone. It's actually about building character. So when a tree is planted, it's planted in a place. And what comes through that place? Mm. Seasons. Mm. Summer, autumn, mm -hmm. winter, spring. Seasons. So what often people do is they go, I'm going to get in a church in a season. And they use that language, season, season, season. And I'm not saying changing churches is a bad thing. What I'm saying is I think we change church too often. I think we're too quick yeah. to become a, a potted plant, um, not a pot plant. <laughs> in South Africa, we call them pot plants, but I think that means things all over the world in different ways. <laughs> but he, here's something. So why would God plant you in a house? Because God is not, God's number one priority for you is not your comfort zone. Mm. So if it was about comfort zone, we would only ever be planted like, okay, let's find where it's summer. 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 But the truth is, when there's a winter season, we are going to talk about this in, in an upcoming Light in the Darkness, the winter forces a root system to grow. It forces a plant to drive down into the ground for its source, for its resource. And here's the thing. People change church too often because they go, this is no longer suiting my comfort zone. And the truth is, Christianity is not about a comfort zone. It's about building character, bringing change. Even right now, people are watching social media around the world and they're like, I don't want to live in that country. I want to live in that country. I don't want to live in this country. I want to go there. This country has problems. That country doesn't have problems. And the deal is every country has problems and God plants you in a local church. And I, I once remember a great perspective that said, there's two O's that should never change your church. Offense and opportunity. You should mm. never leave your church through offense and you should never leave your church through opportunity. You mm. stay planted in your house, being faithful to what God speaks mm. over you in that house because here's the deal. God wants you to grow. Yes. And so often we are pursuing the wrong things. Yeah. And when God says be planted in the house, it means mm. put your root system down. And it's a scary thing because mm. even in society, now it's become convenient to say, well, you know, it's what I'm doing today, but I don't know if I'll be doing it tomorrow. We marry today but I don't know if we'll be married yeah. tomorrow. I'm doing this now, but I don't know if I'll be doing it tomorrow. And the thing is though, what then happens is you live a life of convenience. Here's the deal. Can I tell you something? I believe that churches can offend people, but I believe that people offend people. And I believe that people can get offended also mm -hmm. in situations. And <laughs> if you've never offended anyone, uh, then you're Jesus. So you actually need to recognize that in your life, living a life going, if it's uncomfortable, if it challenges me, if, it, if, it's, if it's hard for me, you know, people believe in forgiveness until they're placed in a position to forgive. People believe in a local church until the local church doesn't quite suit them. And so God wants you planted to grow character, right? To build fruit. And it's so interesting that in the analogy around trees, you'll see often farmers will tell you the worse a winter, the better a summer, mm. the better the crop. Like when winter comes through and it forces trees to grow bigger root structures, mm. when summer comes again, that tree that had a tough winter gets a great yield because that root system has grown and developed and God wants you growing in your character. And so I do believe you should build your life around your church, around your, your, your family and your church, mm. not necessarily around just preferences and cultures and economies because I yeah. feel like church is such a huge part of your spiritual development and yeah. God's priority in your life is first your spiritual development. He wants you in a home, in a house, planted. And uh, when the seasons come through, we don't uproot and change. We go through them with the Lord and we allow him to grow character in us. Amen. Hey? Amen. Yeah. I think you did move to South Africa for me, but we'll say you did it for church. I think it was. Huh. <laughs> okay, let's receive communion with people because I actually want to pray with you. If you're not in a local church because you have been hurt, because you have experienced hardship, and I'm not saying that you have a right not to feel hurt. My, my point is don't follow the devil's plan for you to uproot yourself and pull back from the yeah. precious thing called the bride of Christ, the local church, because God has your calling, has a future for you connected to his house. Amen. So we want to pray with people, receive communion right now. And I pray that you are ministered to, to be, to be maybe just motivated to consider that 
God has planted you somewhere or there is a place that you are to be planted yes. and that there is a grace on that decision. When I, when I preached about forgiveness and bitterness and that, it's like we often think we have to do the whole work, but Jesus actually says around bitterness and forgiveness, just give me faith like a mustard seed, just give yeah. me an inch. And I feel like we're just gonna pray that you just give God an inch and let him work and you'll find yourself planted in a local, in a local church. Mm. Babe, would you lead us in communion? Sure. So if you can just take some bread, some juice, and repeat after me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For your broken body. For your broken body. That was whipped. That was whipped. And torn apart. And torn apart. For my brokenness. For my brokenness. For my healing. For my healing. So today. Today. I thank you. I thank you. I am healed. I'm healed. I am whole. I'm whole. By your broken body. By your broken body. In Jesus' name. Break the bread and receive. Amen. We lift up the juice. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For your precious blood. For your blood. That was poured out for me. Poured out for me. For my sin. For my sin. For every lack. Every lack. For my protection. For my protection. My covering. My covering. Thank you. Thank you. By your blood. By your blood. I am made righteous. I am made righteous. Forgiven. Forgiven. Loved. Loved. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. amen and amen. Thanks for joining us today on Beauty and the Beast. Sorry, Light in the Darkness. Very funny. Egg was just a joke. Good to have you back with me, babe. Thanks. We'll see you babe. again tomorrow. <laughs>